Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today, I'm going to take a look at my Resin Lab setup. I'm going to use my Anycubic Photon M3 Max today. Let's start by taking a quick look at the Resin Lab's website. Here we are on the Resin Lab's website. I'll have links in the description. I was fortunate to be able to get in touch with Andrew Sink, one of the creators of the Resin Lab's cable, through my work with 3D with us. Andrew was kind enough to send me a cable for my Canon camera so I could do a video and an article on Resin Labs. I encourage you to check out their site. Him and Uncle Jesse did an awesome job with this and make it super easy to get started. The first thing you're going to need is a good camera. I'm using a Canon EOS Rebel SL3 with my video today. This camera has been doing a really great job around the studio. You're also going to need a good externally powered battery. That way you're not going to run out of power during the long print times it takes to get the resin labs. I also like to make use of a light ring. That way I get perfect lighting on every shot. I picked this one up in town. It has multiple colors and you can control the brightness. And most importantly you're going to need a resin labs cable. This is a cable Andrew sent to me. All you need to do is install it on the printer, plug it into your camera, and you're ready to go. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is remove the UV cover on the back of my Photon M3 Max. I just need to remove the 8 screws, and then I can get the cable installed. Now that we have the UV cover, we're just going to drop the end of the cable into this opening here, exposing it to the UV light. This is all you really have to do. You can go ahead and test your camera now if you want, but I'm going to take another step and remove the back panel, just to show you how I have mine set up to ensure that I get a trigger each time. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the top two, bottom two, and the middle bottom screw. That way I can remove the access panel and ensure the cable is getting exposed to the UV light. With the panel out of the way, we can see the resin lapse cable here with the light sensor. One nice thing about the Anycubic Photon M3 Max is there's nothing blocking the UV light from the actual enclosure. There are several SLA units that have the UV light enclosed, so you might have to take a couple extra steps to make sure that your sensor is being exposed to the UV light correctly. Alright, and now with the sensor here, it's ready to go. We can reinstall the back panel and get ready to test the camera. With the printer ready to go, next thing I'm going to do is get my camera set up. First thing I'm going to do is power it on and make sure it's set in manual mode. Next, I'm going to go to the lens and make sure it's set to manual focus. You don't want it to try to autofocus on any of your shots. This way you got good consistent photos. You also want to make sure you set it to silent shooting or an electronic shutter mode if your camera supports it. This will save wear and tear. Now, with my camera, I can't use silent shooting while I use the live view mode. For some reason it gets disabled. 
So I'll use the live view mode to set my focus and make sure the shot's lined up. And then I'll turn it back off so I can enable silent shooting. The next thing you're going to do is make sure you have any kind of power save disabled. That way the camera doesn't get shot off during your print. Next, I'm going to make sure the manual focus is enabled. And this camera's nice. It adds a bit of a red hue to whatever's in focus, helping you line everything up. Alright, it's back in silent shooting mode, so I'm ready to get everything set up. The next thing I'm going to do is install my externally powered battery into my camera. This way, I'm not going to run out of power during a long 12 to 24 hour print that I usually do with my M3 Max. This is where I'm going to plug my resin lapse cable into. My camera uses a 2.5 millimeter cable. Now, when I have my camera set up on my tripod, I don't like to unplug and plug the cable in. It tends to shake the camera and move it around. So I like to use a little extension cable to make connecting and disconnecting a lot easier and not to disturb the camera. This way, I can unplug it and plug it back in, and there's no problem. This is the ring light I like to use. It's really handy because it comes with its own tripod and has multiple colors and brightness adjustment. I picked this up at Princess Auto in town here, but you can find multiple versions of it on Amazon, and I highly recommend getting one for any kind of time lapse or video shooting. I generally like to use just the white light, but it has multiple colors which can be handy in multiple types of shoots. Now that I have my printer ready and my camera ready, I'm going to go ahead and test the cable and make sure it triggers on each exposure. It will automatically take a picture once you plug the cable in. Next, I'm going to expose for one second. And hopefully if everything's all good, your camera will take a picture. There's our light, and click. There goes our picture. Now we're ready to go. We can continue on with the finalizing of our setup. Now that I've verified everything's working, I can bring in my ring light and get it set up. I like to use the ring light because it provides nice even light, and I block all light from coming into the workroom while I'm shooting a time lapse. You don't want any UV light to come in and expose any of the resin in the fat. You don't want it curing mid-print and causing any damage to your printer, so make sure you're extra careful in blocking all UV light if you're planning to do a time lapse video. And here we are looking at the final setup. I'll use the live view screen to make sure my focus is just right, and then I'll switch the live view off. One handy thing I like about this light is you can change colors, but I tend to use just the natural white and the cool white for my videos. But it's always nice to have some options. All that's left to do now is load your printer and get a print going. I used two prints in my testing. One has a Poison Ivy from B3 to Zurich, and another one from Hex 3D. They both came out great. I left the back cover on the one time lapse. The only problem with the back cover is that you're going to have to tend to deal with reflections in it. So, all future time lapses, I think I'm going to have the back cover off, because you just got a nicer look with it. And here we have a closer look at the Poison Ivy model from B3 to Zerg. This is an absolutely beautiful model. I can't believe how nice this printed. It's definitely one of my favorite recent prints that I've done.
And because it's poison ivy, here I am using my ring light turned on to the green. I think it really accents this print really nice. It just goes to show what some lighting can really do to highlight a print. I'll have a link in the description to B3 Desserts Patreon. I highly recommend you go and check them out. These guys make some of the most detailed models I've ever seen. And here we have a Stranger Things bust from X3D. The amount of detail on the bust is amazing. I'm really happy how it turned out. And here we are with it in the red light. I think the red light really highlights the detail in the shadows on the face. Alright guys, that was just a quick look at my resin lab setup. Big thank you to Andrew Sink and Uncle Jesse for creating the resin labs cable. And thanks again to Andrew Sink for sending me the cable to test out. I really appreciate it and I had a blast. I can't wait to see what kind of time lapses I can make next. Thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and check out the Studio Zombie 3D Instagram for more of what's going on in the studio. Take care everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.